All right, so the part of the chapter in Isaiah chapter 32, we're going to be focusing on is the very first part there. And uh, the title of my sermon tonight is Be a True Liberal. You say, what are you talking about? We're in a Baptist church. Or you say, be a liberal. Yes, I want you to be a liberal. You heard me right. We all ought to be liberal. Now, we're going to define the terms in a minute, just so you don't get confused. You're like, wait a minute, I thought, I thought we're supposed to be conservatives. Well, we're looking at, uh, at the Bible here. And it's interesting, what we see here in Isaiah chapter 32 is actually describes the way that the world views liberals today. There's uh, Liberal itself is not a bad word. There's nothing bad about it. I know it's been kind of taken over, but liberal means you're, you're you know, think of liberty is kind of where the root, where it is where the root word, where liberal comes from, just having a lot of freedom, a lot of being free with, with a lot of your goods or a lot of whatever. You could be liberal, you know, if you, uh, even if you just go to a restaurant, right, and, you, and you're getting a sandwich and you're like, you could be real liberal with the mayonnaise. Right? What does that mean? Go ahead and, and just load it up, right? Put a lot on there. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad with that. It's a good attribute to have to be real free in, in many areas. Now, obviously, in our political culture, liberal tends to, to have more of a meaning with socially liberal or socially free in the sense of a lot different moral standards and just allowing for way more wickedness and sinfulness and things that just ought to be utterly rejected, right? That's kind of the common meaning today when you think of liberal versus conservative. But now look at, look at Isaiah 32 because this is a, a reference here. Look at verse number five. The Bible says the vile person, again, vile, someone who's kind of disgusting and, and just not, uh, you know, definitely not a good person. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. So if they're no more called liberal, that means they were called liberal, right? The vile person is, is called liberal. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainy and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. We see this today. The, the people who would espouse what, what, what is commonly known as you know, liberals will be the ones that in one side of their mouth, they'll claim, oh, we're for the working class. We're for the poor. We want to you know, give all this you have these programs for people to be able to eat and do this and do that and, and all these social programs, right, to help out the poor. But they practice hypocrisy. The, the, the programs and the plans, when you really look at them, they, they're, they're not designed to actually help anybody. And I'll explain what I mean by that. And I don't want to get too political tonight because I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to get off into how we should be liberal. But if you haven't figured this out already, and I'm, I'm going to be political just for a minute, in our, in our government today, I don't care if you have an R or a D next to your name, almost every single one of them is all just big government and for just more, more stuff, more spending, and the different, one of the biggest differences between how we should be liberal and a good form of liberal and what, in the way that other people are liberal today, today's liberals are great at spending everybody else's money, right? But that's not really liberal. Like we, we, when, you, when we're being liberal, we should be liberal with our own stuff, right? If you, you know, being generous, you, you have your goods and your stuff and you want to share that with people, you want to help people out, You'd be very liberal in doing so and, and helping others and just being real free with the things that you have and being able to help other people. And that's a good attribute. That's a positive thing. But when you say, you know what? I don't really have that much, but this guy's got a lot. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to, here, give me, give me some of that because I need to help out this person, this person, and this person. And then you call yourself a liberal. Well, that, that doesn't work because you're, you're, you're taking someone else's goods to do that. And, you know, through the government, that's what they do with taxation. They just say, well, you know, we want to make all these programs. I don't have the money to do that, so we're just going to force you all to, to pay for this to be done. And then, see, look, I'm a good person because now I'm making everybody else pay for this person, whatever, instead of allowing individuals to decide whether or not 
they want to be charitable, they want to be liberal, they want to be whatever. Um, and oftentimes you'll see the, the really vile people that are called liberal today, and it is. I mean, who's, who are the ones pushing for the sodomite marriages and, and all of the acceptance and tolerance and promotion of the most vile, wicked people? It's who's known as the liberals. And the Bible refers to this. There's going to come a time where the vile person shall be no more called liberal. And I can't wait for that day. <laughs> it's going to be great. Because liberal itself is not a bad word. If you look up this classic liberalism, it's a very good term. But to, to, everything's been kind of turned on its head these days. Turn, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 11. We'll start to look at how we should be liberal. It's a very good attribute to have. It's a very good virtue to have to be liberal. I hope we have a church full of liberals in this sense when we read Proverbs. I don't even want someone calling me a conservative anymore these days because you think of the word conservative it means you're conserving what, where, what things are. I don't want things to be the way they are now. Maybe at one point conservative could have been good if things were going really good and had good values and good morals and stuff. But now it's, I don't want to conserve things this way either. I want, I want to push back and just go back to the old paths and, and have more righteousness and more freedom and, you know, whatever, all that. I'm, I'm not going to get off on a political rant tonight. So let's, let's look at the Bible. Proverbs 11. See, and the great thing about the Bible is and Scripture and truth is that if you have this right, if you have the knowledge, the political will just follow anyways. Once you have this knowledge and this wisdom... You let that lead your politics, you don't, you don't ever have to teach politics from the, from the pulpit because this is the guide. This is what's going to help you to, to make the right choices and understand what's right and what's wrong and see people for who they really are and see the, the, the wicked and, and you know these wicked people out there that are just making money off others and just will take gifts, take bribes. I mean, read that in Proverbs about the, the person that takes gifts. And it's referring to bribes. And look at, look at how many people in Congress, in the government, how much money they have, and where does that come from? And all the sweet deals that are being made that... that help out the, the big government or the big corporations and kind of stamp out the competition and they're getting these kickbacks and whatever. There's all, there's all kinds of garbage going on in government today and it's, and it's disgusting. But I think we're just getting what we deserve because when the people's heart turns away from the Lord, what are you going to get? When the people's hearts are wicked overall, I think it's going to be reflected in the leadership. But that's not how we should be. Proverbs 11, look at verse number 25. The Bible says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. And again, this concept about being liberal, it can be summed up very simply in, you know, be not deceived, God is not mine, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And that's in reference of doing bad things, but also when you do good things. When you're sowing good, when you're being very free and very liberal and very generous and very helpful, and the more good that you do, you will reap that back. God will bless you for that. So the Bible saying here, the liberal soul shall be made fat. What that's referring to is, hey, if you're very free and helpful and giving, humanly speaking, you're going to be thinking, well, then how could I be made fat? I'm not going to increase because I'm giving away everything. Right? I'm, 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 I'm giving away too much. I mean, if I'm going to be made fat, then I'm going to have to be collecting and storing up and saving everything and putting it away here. How can I possibly be made fat? Well, God's saying, you know what? If you're liberal, if you're giving, if you're very generous, if you're, you know, it will come back to you. He'll make sure. And he says, the, uh, he that watereth shall be watered also himself. God sees you being given. God sees you putting other people first. God sees you implementing this type of virtue in your life and having this type of an attitude. He'll bless you for that. Because that's the way he wants you to be. Verse number 26. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. So he's talking about someone that... They're growing crops. You've got a cornfield and you're harvesting corn. 
Well, the person that just harvests it and then hoards it, right? Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna store all this up and I'm gonna hoard it, I'm gonna hold on to it, right? Just in case. I know you guys are all hungry for corn, but I, I mean, I just, I gotta, I gotta hold on to this. Well, it's not hard to see the people are going to curse him. <laughs> like, oh, man, this guy's got all this corn. You know, it's just sitting in this barn. We could use that corn right now. And, you know, he's not, he's not selling it. It says, but blessed shall be upon the head of him that sell it. Look, it doesn't even say that you just have to give it away for free. But you'll be blessed if you sell it. I mean, get it out there and use it. And that's why unless we have, you know, the, the way that we deal with finance and stuff in this church, and this is a little bit of a side note, Unless we have a specific plan of like, hey, we're going to do this, like, like our plan of to move into another space. Well, we have to have a certain amount of money in order to do that. But when we don't have a goal or something like that, the money that comes in, there's no reason to just sit and hold on to resources. Let's get it out there and just keep using it and it'll just build on itself. Let's just keep on going and not just hold on. Let's, let's, let's let God work with it. You know, let's, let's put it to use. And we need, you know, having that type of a mentality, even in your own house, you, you think of, um, you know, I preached before about Christian prepping about a week or so ago. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea to be prepared for, for a hard time or whatever. But let's say you have stuff and, you, you know, you feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, okay, we got some things for a rainy day. And, and, you, and you have it. But if someone else has a need, you ought to give that person whatever they need and if that means depleting a little bit of your own personal resources that's stashed away, so what? Be liberal, be generous, be giving, provide for them, help them out. And well, actually, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because there's verses that, that specifically talk about that, about that quality and that attribute is something that we ought to have and not be so focused on ourselves. And that's what verse 26 is saying here about him that withholdeth corn, right? The people are going to curse him, but blessing shall be upon him that selleth it. Verse 27, he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief it shall come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. We don't need to trust in our goods. That's why it's okay to be liberal and to, and to be free with, with the things that we have, the goods that we possess, because if you trust in the riches, you're going to fall anyways. So who cares? Turn if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. We're going to see the same, this a similar concept here. Second Corinthians nine is in the context here. We're going to read quite a bit of this passage, but this is talking about just supporting other believers supporting other saints and helping people out in their time of need and this is the apostle paul writing to the church at corinth and just expressing hey there's this need here and i want you to help and whatever you can give to help these people out you should give and this this goes through the attitude that we should have I, we covered this when i preached on tithing but it it, it stands to be to go, be gone over again because it ties in with how we should just be liberal with our goods and, and things like that. Verse number one, Second Corinthians 9, the Bible says, For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago. And your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready." Lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this self, this, excuse me, the same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. So all of this said to be summarized, He's speaking to the church at Corinth and saying, I know the forwardness of your minds. I know that you guys are already willing to help people out. And, and that's a great, this is actually praise he's given to the church at Corinth. They had a lot of other issues, a lot of other problems. But in this area, he's saying, you know what? I know the forwardness of your mind. I know that you're willing to help. He says, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning here that we're going to be coming. And if you could just, just prepare 
the bounty, the, you know, the, the, what people are willing to give to help out these other saints. We're going to come. We're going to collect that. He says, we've already been bragging on you guys, saying that, yeah, these guys are real helpful. They'll be able to bless you. They, they've got, you know, they're, they're willing. They've got a willing mind. They're ready to do this. But we're giving you some advance notice so that way when we come, you're not just unprepared and going, whoa, we didn't expect this. I don't know how we're going to get stuff together. Give you a time to think and to plan and be able to give what you can give. And then he's saying also like, well, we're also letting you know so that when we get there, we're not embarrassed because we're talking you up, saying how, how generous and how liberal you guys are. But then you really not have anything. He's, 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 he's giving them that forewarning. He's saying so that we don't be ashamed, you know, that we say not you should be ashamed too, basically, if you're not, if you're not willing, to, if you're not able to help here. Not, not able, but not willing. There's a difference between the two. Not everyone is able to provide much, but everyone should be willing to provide what you can. Verse number six, he says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So he's, what's it referring to? It's basically the same, a uh, similar verse of Proverbs eleven twenty five: the liberal soul shall be made fat. When you sow so sparingly, you're not sowing very much. You're, you're kind of holding back. You're withholding. You sow a little bit, but if you sow a little bit, you're only going to reap a little bit. You're only going to get what you put into it. But he's saying, if you sow a lot and you're just free sowing that seed, man, yeah, well, let's get some more seed in here. Well, let's, let's keep pushing this thing and see how much we could get to grow. And that type of attitude and being real liberal with the, with, with the sowing, then you, could, you can expect to reap bountifully. Now, his sowing parable here has to do with their giving in this context, just, just the finances, the giving to these other people. It says in verse 7, Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God for the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Now, I want to make a couple of points here. One, I'm not preaching this because I think that like you all need to give more to the church because this has nothing to do with that's not why this subject coming up at all. This is just a virtue to have about being liberal. This is not I'm not preaching on tithing, I'm not preaching anything like that. It has more way more to do with your personal interactions just with other people in general. Especially with the brethren, but just other people in general and just how you kind of View your own goods and your own life and, and the way that you manage your own resources and the, and, the, and the type of person, if you could be looked at as a generous person or someone who's real stingy and tied and not allowing anything, right? And the Bible's talking about here that the, the liberal spirit, the liberal attitude being more free and, and the liberal distribution is going to go very far. It's a good attribute to have. To, bury, to be very free and open with your goods and with your stuff, especially when people have need to help them out in their times of need and to not even give it a second thought and not worry about it. Now, he quoted here in verse number nine, it says, as it is written, he quotes the Old Testament. And we're going to take a look at the context of this verse, which is found in Psalm 112. So what he's quoting says, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. 
This is a, a, a quote from Psalm 112, verse 9. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, the righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. And the interesting thing is that earlier in, the, in Psalm 112, it also talks about basically having this liberal soul. Verse number 4 says, Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. So he's saying a good man's going to lend. Oh, you're in need? Here you go. I'll lend unto you. I'll give unto you. I'll help you out. Already went over the subject of usury. Obviously, we're not talking about lending to make a gain then off of the person, off your brother that's in need. You know, you lend because you love them and you're trying to help them out and say, okay, I could do without this. Here, you need it more than I do. The core value here of being liberal has the same mindset that John the Baptist had when he was trying to point people to Christ. He said, he must increase, but I must decrease. It's the same attitude that says, I'm going to esteem others better than myself, as it says in Philippians chapter 3. It's the same mind that was in Christ. Christ came to be a servant, not to be ministered unto. He came to minister. He came to help other people out. He came and spent his time and devoted his resources into helping other people. And this is the mindset that we ought to have. Being liberal with our things, not being so wrapped up into hoarding away whatever it is, you know, just, just all these goods and all this stuff and just keeping it locked up and locked tight and just there it sits. There is so much more that can be done with those resources. So much more. Why let it sit? What's it good for? I started to get that same question in my mind. I see the, you know, we, we had some food and some other things stacked up. And again, I'm not saying that it's a, a bad thing or a sin to have stuff. But after a while, I'm looking going, this stuff is just collecting dust. Eventually, it's just going to go bad. Like, what, what good is that going to do? That's why I encourage you, if you do do the preparations, if you need to be cycling through that and still using it so it doesn't just go to waste, be smart about that. But then it's like, look, if someone else has a need for something, you know, I, I could look at all kinds of things that we, we've had stored up in our garage or wherever and just like, I haven't used this in years and I hear someone else saying, oh, I got to do this project. Here you go, take it, right? Because that's, that, that's the, what good is it going to do just sitting on a shelf? Especially with the physical goods. It's all going to just be burned up, destroyed. It's all going to, everything breaks over time anyways. It only lasts so long. And honestly, where is your heart? Who cares? Do we really care about the little things and the stuff? We shouldn't. Turn if you would to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Maybe this isn't the way that you normally think, but, but you ought to consider it and consider it in your heart to maybe to, to make that change. Not maybe, but to make that change. We're going to see there's still so much more scripture we're going to look at about having this virtue of, of being more liberal and just being more open and free with your stuff, with your things and being generous and being open with that, willing to help and not expecting just to receive again and just, and just having that. Um, Luke 14, Jesus talks here about making a feast. Look at verse number 12. It says, Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. So he's saying, look, when, when you're going to have a feast, when you're going to have a dinner, don't just invite your friends that, okay, Monday night it's me, Tuesday night it's you, when, you know, and there's just this full equality of like, well, this week I got you, next week you get me back type of a thing. The point he's making here is he's going to go further in verse number 13. He says, but when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. 
He's saying, invite people that can't pay you back. That you're not expecting, oh, I, got, I'll, I get you this time and you're getting me back later, right? The whole purpose is to get to the heart, right? He's not saying you can never invite friends over for dinner that have the possibility of, of giving you dinner later, right? It's, it's what's in your heart. Why are you doing it? Are you just doing, are you only, only going to make a dinner for people because you're expecting, well, they're going to get me back sometime. They're going to be able to pay me back. That's why he's saying, look, you shouldn't have that in your heart at all. When you invite people over, it's just, hey, I've made a feast for you to be a blessing unto you. God bless you. Never any expectation at all of just, well, getting, if we do this, we'll get something back. And isn't that the way that people think these days, especially when it comes time to holidays like Christmas? Well, I don't know. Did this person give us a gift last year? What did they give us? Well, how much did they spend? Well, if we spend this much, we, we'll, we'll give it, we'll spend $20 because I think that's probably what they're going to give us back. And there's just this, like this, this equal exchange. It's like, no, you, you've completely just don't understand the whole concept of giving a gift at that point. Why are you even doing it then? That's not, that's not what it's all about. Your heart should be set to, to just give. If you, if you love people, you want to give them a gift, don't even think about what you're getting back or if they're going to give anything to you and, and have this, you know, or even have an attitude where they're going to think, oh man, this is going to be hanging over my head now if I don't give them something back. There's nothing worse than someone who wants to give you a gift and then hold that over your head. We've had that happen before and, and, and you know, I, won't, I won't even accept gifts from people who do that. Because that's just rotten. Don't ever give something to someone and then just be like, well, remember, I gave you this and I, you know, you, well, did you give it to me or not? I mean, did you, did you really want me to have it? Because if you didn't, then you could have it back. We don't need it that bad. But when we give, it should just be, here you go. I love you. Ne and never expect anything in return. That's a liberal soul. And when God sees that, and God sees the, the selflessness in that, that's the spirit he wants you to have, and he'll, he'll bless you for that. In this passage, he says, you know what? When you make those fees for people who can't recompense you again, he says you will be rewarded at the resurrection of the just. So at the judgment seat of Christ, you will gain rewards for being generous, for being open, for giving, for giving to people that, can't, that you know they can't do anything back for you. That's how we ought to be. And we need to be careful with our spirit, too. Because, look, obviously there are people out there that are living wicked lives that if you give them money, it's not going to be helping them. Right? The drunkard, the, the druggie that's on the street with a cardboard sign that's just, at, you know, just, just begging for the money, that if you give them money, they're just going to go around and buy booze with it. That doesn't help them. You don't have to be liberal in giving all your money to that person, but you need to be careful that you don't take that same mentality of saying, well, if I just give to them, then they're going to just go and waste it and apply that then to anybody who's at, who's at, you know, oh, well, I don't know what you're going to do. You might not do this right and just, just never give them anything anymore because you think that nobody's going to do right with it. Like, that's not right either. We, do, we need to be as merciful as God has been and, and as, you know, as, as free with, with trying to help people. Now, when you see someone that, that might be the drunkard or the druggie, it doesn't mean you don't offer to help them. Just because you don't give them money doesn't mean you can't help them. And when we... When, one of the things that I would often say to people that would call, because you know, as a church, especially, I haven't gotten them to date yet here, but I think it's because we're not published in any like phone books and things like that. Once you get published in phone books, people out there just looking for money will go through the phone books and just start calling churches looking for free money. It's a scam that a lot of people do, uh, unfortunately. But oftentimes, it's not just a scam, it's just people who you know, they, they're really foolish, they're living wicked lifestyles or whatever, and then they go and they lose all their money and maybe they're being chastened by the Lord or just reaping what they've, what they've sown. 
and then they just call asking for money. But one of the things that, I, that I'll say to these people is, look, I'm not going to give you any money, but I will try to help you. Come to church. And I can show, you know, do you know, are you saved? Do you know what it means? You know, that's what's going to help them. Just like the, the Apostle Peter and John, when they went to the temple and there's someone there asking for alms, they say, hey, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Right? I don't have any money to give you, but I, I will help you. I do see you're in need. I will open up to you and, and they could share the gospel to her. In that case, they healed them. No, you know, I don't. I know that I haven't been endowed with the, with the spiritual gift of healing. That would be cool, but I, 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 haven't, I haven't witnessed that to date. So that's not something that I'm going to be able to do. But there are other ways to help, obviously, leading people to the healer, to Jesus Christ and, and giving them the gospel. That's one way that everybody can help and not, not shutting up your bowels of compassion towards people. Just because money won't help them doesn't mean you can't help them. But in other cases, you know what? Giving of your, your physical goods will help people out. I'll read a few verses from Proverbs for you. You could turn to um, Matthew chapter number 5 while I read a few of these. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, 17, He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. The Bible says when you have pity on the poor, you're not just, when you lend to them, you're not just lending to them, you're lending to God. Because that's one of the ways that God will help the poor is using someone else who he's blessed to help them out, to lend unto them. And he says, you're not, you're not just lending unto them, you're lending unto the Lord and that which he hath given will he pay him again. He's saying God will recompense, just like Jesus said. When you provide the feast for, for the poor and the lame and the blind, and the maimed, at the resurrection of the just, you'll be rewarded. You'll be recompensed. Same exact concept, Proverbs 19, 17. Proverbs 22, 9. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Proverbs 28, 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. You've been blessed with stuff. You can be free with it. Because honestly, if you recognize that you have been blessed and not so proud as to think that everything that you have is just because of you, when you give the, the honor and the credit unto the Lord for providing for you and blessing for you and giving you all the provision and overabundance that you have, then it's a lot easier to say, Wow, well, here's a person that's in need. God's given me all this stuff, so I'm going to help that person out too. I'm going to lend unto the poor. I'm going to give unto the poor. And he's saying, if you do that, you're not going to lack. You won't be lacking in anything. But if you hide your eyes and say, oh, I just don't even want to look at that. Oh, here's someone in need. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of stay away from that and walk over here. It says you should, you'll have many a curse. God, God doesn't like that attitude. Even when Jesus said to the, when he was talking to the, to the rich young ruler, right, when he said, what, you know, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And he says, well, you know the commandments. You know, what, what, what does the law say? What does God say? What does the Bible say? And he, and he you know, he starts quoting all the, the Ten Commandments, or half of them. And uh, he's like, yeah, but I did all these things. You know, for my youth up, I'm, I'm, I'm following the law. I'm good. I'm righteous. And then Jesus answered him. Now, obviously, he's proving a different point. He's trying to point out that this guy's not perfect. That's why he's giving him those answers. But he says this, and everything that he says is true. Now, obviously, he's saying things to make a point, but what he's saying is true, and what he says here, he says, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Now, yes, he's proving a point to the guy, and proving that he's not perfect. And he, this, this one statement ends up, the guy goes away sad. But the statement's still true. I believe you go and you sell that thou hast and give to the poor and follow, take up your cross, follow Jesus and just live that type of life, you will be blessed. You will be rewarded for that. You have treasure in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, is that where you are? One of the reasons we should be generous is because 
our heart should not be set on the things of this earth. Look at verse number 38 of Matthew chapter number 5. Verse 38, the Bible says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. And basically what, what, you know, what he's expressing here is just, hey, you know, someone, someone hits you, someone does you wrong, and they're like, yeah, go ahead, hit me on the other side too. Right? It's, it's an attitude that you have. Oh, you want to you wanna sue me and, and take away my, my coat? Well, here, you can have this too. Go ahead, take it. Right? I don't care about it. You're going to hurt me physically? Whatever. You're going to take away my stuff? Fine, here, just take it all. I don't care about that stuff. I care about doing what's right. You're going to compel me to go a mile? I'll go with you two miles. It's a mindset. It's an attitude that we ought to have. It's, it's a liberal attitude just saying, go ahead, take it all. I don't need it. It's the same attitude that Job had. Naked came I into this world, and naked shall I return. Lord's blessed, Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's a man that had all kinds of stuff. He had it all taken away, whatever state he's in. The Apostle Paul said, I, you know, I, I've learned, you know, I've been, um, I know how to abound. And I, oh man, why is that scripture just, does anyone have that memorized? I've, I've been both a base and abound. And whatsoever state I am, therewith, I've learned therewith to be content. Right? I mean, I, I know it's not exactly right. Does anyone have that quoted, memorized, word perfect, to stand up and say it any man? No? All right. Get that one down. The next time we'll, you'll be like, I know that one. But you know what I'm talking about. Um, that's the attitude that, that, that God wants us to, be, to have. Not to be worried about our stuff and, and be content. And you know what? If you've been blessed, be blessing other people. Len, who cares? Who cares if you don't give it back? Turn if you would to 1 John chapter 3. This is what I was alluding to closer to the beginning of the sermon. If you have the goods, if you have been blessed, if you have things to be a blessing to someone else, then why not bless that person? What good is it doing anyone sitting on a shelf collecting dust? That's why I say with all of our goods here, we buy the, you know, we get the DVDs and all the resources and the Bibles and everything else. Hey, take as many as you want and get rid of them. Give them out. That's why we have them. We don't, you know, we're not, we're not stocking them up just so they can look real. Wow, look at all these DVDs we have. Hey, look at all these. Don't they look nice and shiny? That's not why we have them. We're not going to just, just look on them. Let's get them out there. Let's put them into use. And when we, the more we get, it, the, get put out to use, the more we'll get. We'll just keep on doing that as much as we possibly can. The resources that we have coming in, let's put them right back out there. Put them right back out on the street. And you know what? When, you're do, when you do that, God will bless you. And that's why the churches in our movement, to my knowledge, none of them have ever had financial problems ever. Most of them are abounding. And that's why, look at all the work that's being done. Look at all the mission trips. Look at everything that's being funded and sourced. And, um, you know, I thank God for Pastor Anderson having that type of heart. Because that's where I learned it from. I've seen him do it. Because he has a heart that doesn't care about the, the money and, and that stuff. Let's just get this stuff out. Let's flood the world with the doctrine. Let's just get it out there. And when you have that mindset and when you're, when you're buying the truth and selling it not and just freely get, you know, freely you've received, freely give, keep on doing it. God will bless you for it. God will make sure, hey, here's someone that's doing what I really want them to do. They're using every resource they can. I've given them 10 talents and they're coming back and, and turning 10 back. Well, I'm going to give them some more, right? God's going to keep on churning that through and, and, and using those that are really doing their best with what they've been given to do more and more and more. Why wouldn't he? So when you're being real free with your stuff, that's why he's going to bless you again. Here's someone who's actually doing what I want him to do. He's got the right spirit. He's got the right attitude. He's helping people out. I'll bless him some more so he can be a blessing to more people. 1 John chapter 3, look at verse number 16. The Bible says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, 
because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Let that sink in a little bit, the amount of love that you ought to have for other believers in Christ. Christ loved you enough to lay down his own life for you. He's saying, you know what, you should have that same love for other, for other believers. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? He's saying, you have something, you see your brother has a need for that, and you just shut up your bowels of compassion. You're like, no, I'm not going to give that to him. I'm just going to hold on to that. He's saying, how does the love of God dwell in that person? Because the love of God would be, hey, I'm, I'm going to help that person out. Just as Jesus gave his life for you, you know, if I just have this thing that's going to help them out, I'll give it to them. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. It's easy to say, oh, yeah, I love your brother. Oh, hey, you need anything. Let me know. And I'll help you out. I'm sure we've all heard that a lot. But how often do people actually follow through with that? And you go, hey, I'm, I'm in trouble. I, I need help. Oh, oh, sorry. oh, yeah, it's not really convenient for me. right? Oh, sorry, yeah, I, I wish I could help. Yeah, I, I can't. As believers, as Christians, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be like that. I mean, I've, like, again, I'm not saying if you, I mean, if you, have, if you have nothing to give, what can possibly be expected of you? But you know if you, if you do or you don't. Nobody is ever, I mean, probably no one that's ever going to come to our church will be in a position of just not having any financial issues at all. I mean, well, everybody I know has some type, of, you know, some type of debt, some type of struggle, some t something going on. Everybody does. But don't let that be an excuse to not be able to help people out. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. I know, I know where we're at is a, is a long ways from where we've come. And just personally in my own family, and I thank God we, we've got to a point to be able to start doing a lot more for, to help other people. We've received a lot of help along the way. But, um, you know, don't, don't get so focused on yourself that you, you shut up your bowels of compassion from others. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, I'm going to close on this. Galatians 6, verse number 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be bearing each other's burdens, helping carry that weight. When someone else has a problem, hey, we're going to be there for you. We're going to help you. We're going to be true friends, not just true friends, but true family, spiritual family members. You got a problem there. I mean, think about your own family. You know, would to God everyone had a family that would just be there for you no matter what? Just physical family. I thank God that, that I have a family like that. If I, if I have any real need, my parents or my brothers, they'd be there for me. I know they would. I could depend on them. But how much more should we be able to depend on brothers and sisters in Christ? I mean, our spiritual brothers and sisters that we're going to be spending eternity with, we ought to be there for each other and be able to bear one another's burdens and be able to turn to someone and be like, hey, you know, I've got this need. Well, you know what? I'm here for you. And I'll tell you right now in this church, I am here for everybody here. For every member of this church, I, as much as I can, I'm here for you. And that's the way we all ought to be, you know, everyone ought to have that same mindset and not worried about, oh, man, this is going to set me back or what, you know. So what? It's not about our, our finances. Who cares? Liberal, being liberal. If you don't care about the, the, the money or the resources that much, then, then what's it going to matter anyways? When you have the proper focus, it's a lot easier to be liberal.
That's what I'm trying to say. When, when your heart's not just, just tied into everything that you, you stockpile, it's a lot easier just to be, to be free with it. And the more you're free like that, the more God's going to bless you for it. Let's bow our eyes every word of prayer. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for being so liberal and so generous with us that you've given us the, the best gift that anyone could ever give gift of eternal life. We thank you for that. We thank you for providing for us, for taking care of us, for promising to feed us and to clothe us. And honestly, we, we don't even deserve it, Lord, but you have been so generous to us. Help us to reflect the love that you've shown us onto others and to be a blessing to people and especially to our brothers and sisters. Lord, help us to to be able to bear each other's burdens and to have the right spirit and not to be caught up with the concerns and the riches and the cares of this world and to just, just focus on, on hoarding things up and trying to save all these things that are just going to get burned up anyways, Lord. If we could be a blessing to others, help us understand that and, and to be able to, to make provision for them. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all the blessings we have in our life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.